Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. I always wanted to have more fun with like GoPro or action cams, but these things are expensive and I experimented a little bit with it, but it seemed like they break too easily for my purposes. Of course, of course, I'm not taking them on a skateboard tour on a helmet, but I'm shooting them from powerful guns. And therefore what I needed was less expensive action camps. And these are now available. And actually I have a great sponsor, you may know it, it's Gearbest, a company that ships directly from China for really low prices. And I picked a total of five action camps that they sell and they are amazingly inexpensive. The cheapest one is just 30 euros 48 cents and the most expensive one is almost 47 euros. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I want to make a really powerful arrow for them that I'm planning to shoot with one of my air guns. So by regulating the pressure, I'm hoping that I can increase the speed more and more to really get the last bit out of them to see how high we can shoot them and also to get some spectacular footage of a camera hitting a target full on. That's going to be exciting. But I have a few requirements for these cameras. First of all, I want 120 hertz modes just because then it's gonna look so much cooler when I play this back in like 30 or 60 frames per second. So slow motion, super slow motion is, is a thing. And believe it or not, all of these cameras can do it. They can go high resolution, full HD and sometimes even 4K, but they also can do like 1280 by 720 in 120 frames per second. So this will be a little bit of a different test than usual tests of action cams because I'm testing them specifically for the purpose to be abused by weapons. <laughs> so let's start the unboxing. And we're starting with the cheapest one, which is the Mac Cool. Actually, it's called Explorer Pro. And I have the black model and it's made in China and it comes in this box. So let's open the box. Okay, well, it's already in the protective case. So it's quite nice. And let's get it out. So this is what you get. Actually there is a display and of course you have it in this nice housing. Seems like a standard shoe here. Okay. Alright. Let's continue to unpack it. Okay, here's another box with all the add-ons. Okay. All right, USB cable. This is a shoe for a tripod, very nice. Another one, just in case. And I think it comes with a double-sided tape, so you can also attach it to surfaces. All right, this seems to be a frame where you can directly mount it onto a tripod. Actually, it's dual-sided. Then you got this clamp for something round, like a bike handle or something. Okay, this is like a lock for the shoe, I believe. Okay, one more mounting screw. Plenty of stuff in the little box. And then we have the user manual. So next is the DV Tech S2 sports cam. It's actually a 2017 model. And um, let's go look it up. This model costs a whopping 33 euros and 27 cents. Right. So this seems to be all the add-ons. Whoa, there's plenty of stuff with this camera. And this must be the camera. Sure is. Okay. Very nice looking, not so much different to the other camera. It says DV Tech on it, very cool. And it comes with a small, a small soft shoulder strap, as per usual. And in here, you also have like adhesive plates, and you also have a little bit of a strap to secure it, I guess. And there's plenty full spare parts. There's like an extra lid, a lot of additional parts, a lot of mounting things, much 
more than the previous model. Okay. Okay. Well, there is even a little adapter, but it's of course for American power plugs. But there is the USB cable, that's really all you need. Yeah, other than that, it's, it's fully supplied. It really is. You even have cable binders. Great deal for just 33 euros, right? Nice. So the next model is the SO33. It's a 4K camera. Of course, you can also do 120p and 720, and it also has Wi-Fi. And this one costs a shocking 43 euros and 29 cents. Amazing. <laughs> Nice packaging. This is the camera itself. I like that it's different. It's like whitish in the front. It looks really cool. Other than that, typical shoe. Now I think it will be no surprise. It's in it here. Yeah, the set seems very much the same, like the straps, spare lid, USB cable, okay, all the shoes. Yeah, plenty of that. Cleaning and then the same attachment. So this seems all very much like the previous model, okay. Even the cable binders, cleaning cloth and the user manual. Okay, next is the Aiken H9R. All right. Yes. Nice packaging. Some clear plastic. This costs a shocking 46 euros and 66 cents. So it's, it's really expensive. <laughs> Let's open it up. It's already clamped in, like in a shoe, that's clever. So this is actually already a thick part of the set. Okay, let's take this out. That's the user manual. And we have two boxes with add-on stuff. Okay, let's look inside. Shoulder strap. The coolest looking USB cable I've ever seen. <laughs> and believe it or not, a full European style loading adapter. That's cool, it's the first one that has that. Okay, and then there's, of course, all the mounting stuff in here. Yes, cable binders, good looking stuff, another shoe. All right, there's even a remote control with it. That's a first. So remote control where you can press record audio and video. That's very, very cool. I applaud them for that idea. And spare lid. So I would say that they are all, all of them are fully equipped with the additional parts that you need. This here is the MCOF 7000S. And it does have 120 FPS, and it even says it goes up to 240 FPS. But they don't say in what resolution, we'll have to find that out. Yes, and it also has Wi-Fi and everything. It even records in H264, so that's cool. And, and this is even more expensive than the previous model, because it costs 46 euros and 97 cents. This means it's, it's 31 cents more expensive than the previous model. It has to deliver for that kind of price. <laughs> okay, it's yellow color as you can see. Okay. Okay. Like a whole box of things. 
packaging is somewhat cheaper than the other models. But you get the same kind of thing like all the... Well, that's a nice strap and with an integrated shoe, so that's useful. USB cable. All of these adapter plates. The straps. And it has the same remote control that the other camera has. It looks exactly the same. Maybe it's just a, an add-on that they buy from the same manufacturer. There's lots of spare parts and that is the camera. Okay. But the packaging isn't quite as good, but I actually like that because too much packaging that you throw away is always such a waste. And this is really all packaging that you need. Yes, yellow. Okay. All right, so all these cameras and all there are the plenty of stuff that comes with them. Now what I will do is I will load them up, charge the batteries so that we can get some recordings done. So all these cameras have embedded Wi-Fi and you can simply start that by pressing the Wi-Fi button here and then it says Wi-Fi on and it also gives you the access data and what you then do is you find the Wi-Fi connection that the camera offers and then of course you will lose your home Wi-Fi and therefore internet won't probably not be available. Okay, and it says device is connected and now you need to start the proper app. Each camera comes with an own app that you can download for free and it's now connecting up with the camera and now you see that I have the picture of the camera right on my cell phone. Kind of cool. And of course I can also start the recording and uh, you know do all these things. However, the thing is that the reach of these cameras, of these Wi-Fi systems is not very far. And that is also true for very expensive models like a GoPro. Even GoPro says that it's about 30 feet, like 9 or 10 meters is maximum distance and I can confirm that. It's the same here. So this is not a replacement for an FPV camera because of the limited reach. I think it is more to, you know, so that if you can, if you mount the camera somewhere where you can't see the display, that you can do that on your cell phone. It's not an FPV replacement. Before I start talking about the individual models, let me say that because of the extremely low price, I think all of them are a great deal. If you need a camera or several cameras for a job and uh, they need to be robust and it's not going to be a disaster if they break, then these are all great options. But of course there are differences. Let me start with the DVTech 4K Ultra HD. I believe that the image quality is not great. It's acceptable, but it's not gorgeous image quality. I think it is amongst the worst image qualities in the test field. Also, you can choose a 120Hz mode, but then if I look at the individual pictures, you can really see that it's only 60Hz. This means that every, every second picture is exactly the same as the previous frame. And um, then, of course, is uh, not a true slow motion. Next is the MG Cool or Mag Cool or whatever how it's pronounced, I don't know, Explorer Pro. This one actually I think is identical really to the DVTech S2 UHD. It has the same issues, image quality is not great and also the 120Hz mode is fake. It really only is 60Hz. But otherwise, nice camera. <laughs> then next in the text field is the SJ8000 Wi-Fi. It's a 4K 24 FPS model and 24 frames is very cinematic. It's, uh, so I think that there is a special need for it. Uh, of course, I only need 1080 60p. Um, the camera has very good image quality. I have to say it's really amazing uh, quality, but the uh, Slow motion mode, the high speed mode, is the worst in the entire test field because it really only is 30 frames per second. It's a miracle to me how this can do 60 frames per second fine in full resolution and then once you go down to 720p you're limited to 30 frames. Must be a firmware issue. I don't know. But of course four frames are absolutely identical in 120Hz mode. Clearly this mode was only defined to say so on the specs that it can also do 120 frames, but in reality it isn't. But if you're looking for a good camera in full resolution or even in 4K resolution, this I can recommend. Okay, then the next model is the Amkov 
It's uh, the AMK 7000S model. And I have to say that this camera is like leaves mixed emotions because the image quality is really good. It's really crisp. It's probably even the best one, just maybe even with the Econ. Uh, but um, the issue is that I think that this originally was a 50 Hz CCD chip uh, because uh, when you look at the images, you see some slight stuttering in the panning. And I analyzed this in the video editing system and I found that like every fifth frame is doubled. And that is a typical PAL NTSC, so 50, 60 Hz pull down. Means that um, if they would sell this as a 50 Hz camera, it would be fine. But as a 60 Hz camera, it is kind of, uh, you know, stuttering. And I don't think that a, uh, an action cam should stutter. So therefore, I'm not sure. Maybe they have another version of the um, have the, another version of the firmware that fixes it. But in a state like this, I think if you want to just do still frames and not and you don't have too much motion in your videos, then this could be a viable option. Now we're coming to the clear leader and winner of this little review contest. It's the Eken. Uh, full name is Eken H9R. It's also a 4K camera. And um, it has really good image quality, specifically for the price. Uh, shines in both the panning and also in the closer, in the close-up. Uh, and also, it is the only camera in the test field that really has true 120 hertz recording. Um, and of course, if you look at the resolution of the image, it looks a little bit like grainy. But keep in mind, these are wide-angle cameras. They have a 170 degree camera angle and this means of course that there's not too many pixels left for anything that is more far away than let's say a meter or two. So as you can see in the slow motion it looks cool and resolution is good and if I slow it down even more like play back the 120 Hertz in 15 Hertz then you can really see a nice uh, smooth slow motion. But of course if you want to see details you need to do close-up slow motion. All in all, for the for the money, I think this one is around 42 euros. This is an amazing camera. It's really great. All right, as a little conclusion, all these cameras for the money that they cost are amazing. And I am at a loss to understand how the Chinese can do that. I mean, for a price like this, I think if this would be produced in Germany, it would cost maybe 600 euros or something. Uh, and this is just 42 euros delivered to your door. In any case, um, I have to say that this opens new possibilities for my channel because now I can use a lot more cameras and I can really also abuse them. I can mount them on projectiles, I can shoot at them and if they break, well, not such a big deal. You know, it was always a little different when a camera cost at least 500 or 600 euros. But for that price, I can accept risks. And of course, what I'm planning to do is, I'm planning to build an arrow for a powerful air rifle and then shoot it up in the air and shoot it against targets and who knows, maybe even shoot two cameras at each other. <laughs> but that will come soon. I hope you enjoyed this little review and, um, well, see you soon. Thanks and bye-bye.